FeatureCam has many of PowerMill's more advanced 3D machining capabilities. Parametric surface machining is one such strategy. This allows toolpaths to follow the curvature of surfaces they are machining, creating a smooth, even toolpath. So I'm going to go to my part view and we can see there are two pre-created surface machining operations. So let's preview the roughing operation. Now this is a Z-level strategy using the offset toolpath and we can see the tool working its way around the part removing the majority of material. Now really the area of interest in this particular case are these surfaces shown selected in red, green and blue. So what I'm now going to do is switch on my finishing toolpath which machines these three surfaces. As we can see, the toolpath parametrically offsets itself to follow the curvature of the surfaces. Now at this stage, if we click on the finishing toolpath, what we see is it is a toolpath feature. We can therefore not see the type of strategy used to create this toolpath. So if you would like a challenge, you should pause the video now and try to recreate this type of surface machining operation. I'm now going to go through a solution to how we recreate this type of finishing toolpath. So I'm going to turn off my current finishing toolpath. I'm going to make a selection of all of the surfaces of interest. So I'm going to quick select all of the blue surfaces using my shortcut key to the select by color dialog. I'm then going to use drag select to select the remaining green faces and blue face of the model. I'm then going to reselect my mouse cursor and use control K in order to remove the unselected faces. Now the type of strategy I'm going to use to create my finishing toolpath is called between two curves. I'm therefore required to create two separate curves to be used as reference curves for my toolpath creation. I'm going to create these curves using my curve wizard, choosing curve from surface and selecting surface edges as the method. So I'm going to zoom in to the front portion of this surface and using my interactive selector I can specify to select the entire front curve region. At this stage I can say finish and that's created curve 9 for me. I can repeat the process again using my curve wizard and selecting the edge towards the back of the surface. If I turn off my shading we can see the two curves that have been created and this can be highlighted from my curve tab. So I'm now going to switch back on the shading, reselect all of the surfaces and I'm going to come to my feature wizard to select a surface milling operation. In this case all of the faces selected have been added into the wizard so I can click next and I'll be just doing a single operation. As I mentioned my finishing strategy type will be between two curves and I can now specify the start and end curve. Again, I can interactively pick these on screen. And again, click Next. And I'm going to accept the default choice in Tool and Machining Attributes. Of course, I can make any changes that I wish to step over. For example, I can specify a step over of 1mm and say Apply. 
and at this stage I'm going to preview the toolpath created. So what we can see, zooming into the middle region, is we have a nice parametrically offset toolpath following the curvature of the surfaces. However, if we look towards the top, we can see we're not machining some areas of the surface. I therefore need to extend the end curve that I created. So I can do this simply by hiding all and showing all curves. I can also show my stock to be used as a reference point. And I'm going to select my trim extend tool and simply extend the points of the curve outwards. I can then come into my surface strategy page and I can reselect curve 10. If I now calculate the toolpath once again, what we see is a more accurate toolpath. Of course, I can make changes to the leads and links. So if I come to my finishing operation, and select the leads tab. I'm going to choose the step over type as loop and for my use lead in and out I'm going to select on all step overs, plunges and retracts. In this case I'm going to specify to use a linear lead in and out with an angle in and out of zero. My lead in and out length is going to be two millimeters. I can apply and once again preview the toolpath and we can see we have an extension ensuring we're machining all aspects of the surface. So if we now preview our roughing operation and our newly created finishing operation in the 3D simulation, we can see the net result. We now see the finishing operation 